talk about polar coordinates. So you're familiar with Cartesian coordinates. If you think about specifying a point in the plane via the Cartesian coordinates by simply saying how far along the x-axis I have to go and how far up the y-axis I have to go in order to get to the point. Well, polar coordinates are another way of specifying a point. We keep the x and the y-axis here just for reference to kind of see where we are. And then this time, instead of saying, oh, I have to go over x and up y, I say that I have to go through an angle of theta and then out a distance of r from the origin. And so we can get between Cartesian and polar coordinates using some trig. So for example, we have this conversion that says if I know what uh, r and theta are, I can then tell you what x and y are. And vice versa, if I know what x and y are, I can then tell you what r and tan theta, and I can take the inverse tangent to find theta specifically. So let me kind of show you how these formulas work. So uh, for example, if I draw this distance right here, and if I know that x is the horizontal distance, y is the vertical distance, I know that the, the total distance to this point right here would be x squared plus y squared square root. And that's where this r comes from. On the other hand, if I know this theta right here, this is if I call this theta, um, I know that if I make a triangle like that, then x can be the adjacent, y can be the opposite, and the opposite over the adjacent is going to be the tangent of theta, which is the same as y over x. So tan theta here, if this is theta, I get tan theta equals y over x. On the other hand, let's look at uh, this, these formulas here. So if my point is specified by an angle of theta and a distance of r from the origin, I can always drop down and say, well, what's this dis distance right here? Well, using trig, I'm on a circle of radius r. I can sort of draw myself a circle. I'm on a circle of radius r, uh, subtending, subtending an angle of theta. And the x-coordinate of that point will be r cos theta. And the y-coordinate of that point will be r sine theta. And that's how we get back and forth between these two coordinate systems. Let's talk about some coordinate systems in 3D. In particular, we have two new coordinate systems, the cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Uh, first, I'll remind you, in Cartesian coordinates, these are the familiar ones, the boxy ones, where we measure the position of a point via how far we have to go along the x-axis, how far along we have to go along the y-axis, and how far we have to go along the z-axis. Uh, cylindrical coordinates are another way of specifying a point in 3D. And uh, they're, they're sort of a, a cheap way once we understand polar coordinates. Basically, we just say what the x and y coordinates are in polar coordinates, and then we give the height in terms of z. So x, again, is r cos theta, where theta is this angle subtended with the x-axis. The y is, again, r sine theta. And z is just z. Same deal here. We have r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's the total distance from the origin to the point's projection in the xy plane. Theta, again, well, the tangent of theta is, again, y over x. I think about dropping a perpendicular down here to the x-axis. That's going to make a right angle. And then theta, the tangent of theta, is the opposite over the uh, adjacent. And that's going to be the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. z is still just z. Excellent. Now we get to something which is a little bit new. And these are the spherical coordinates. This one is kind of the hardest, I think, to, to get comfortable with. So in this case, the only familiar thing left over is the theta from, from both cylindrical and polar coordinates. So that theta is still the angle subtended with the x-axis. But now, instead of r being the distance we have to go out in the xy plane, uh, we have a spherical radius rho. Rho is the total distance from the origin out to the point p. And we also have this new angle, phi, which is the angle that I make with the z-axis. So in order to get to a point in spherical coordinates, I have to go out a radius of rho, I have to swing around in the xy plane an angle of theta, and I have to swing down an angle of phi from the z-axis. Let's see if we can say what x, y, and z are in terms of rho, phi, and theta. 
Okay, so first of all, I think the easiest one to get is z. And the reason it's easiest to get z is z is this height right here. And because this angle right here is phi, I also have an angle of phi right here because this makes a, uh, uh, a uh, two, two complementary angles right there along the same line. So this guy right here, this is an angle of phi. I've got a hypotenuse, which is rho, and that makes this one, uh, this is the adjacent angle. So that makes this rho cosine phi. Excellent. All right. So I have rho cos phi right here for my z height. And this guy right here is the opposite angle, so this one is rho sine phi. But that's the same thing as r in cylindrical coordinates. So let's just call that r. Now I know in, in cylindrical coordinates that x and y are r cos theta and r sine theta. But I can tell you what r is in terms of rho and phi. So let me erase the r and replace it with rho sine phi. And then I'll have x, y, and z in terms of rho, phi, and theta. So this is rho sine phi for r, rho uh, sine phi for r, and then the x is cos theta, and the y is sine theta. Great. So now let's say I know what x, y, and z are. How do I figure out what rho, theta, and phi are? Rho is probably the easiest one because that's just the actual distance from the origin to the point. So it's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Great. Now theta I can get just the same if I know what x and y and z are. In fact, I don't care what, x is, uh, what z is. I know that the tan of theta is equal to y over x, just like it was in cylindrical coordinates. Now the final one is phi. Let's think about phi for a minute. Um, I want to know what phi is in terms of these guys. Well, I know what the length of this line is. That's the square root of x squared plus y squared. I can tell you what it is in terms of x and y, because this is the same thing as r down here. This height is z from here to there. And I know this angle is phi. And so I can say that the tangent of phi is the opposite over the adjacent, which is square root of x squared plus y squared over z. And that allows me to get between the x, y, z coordinates and the uh, rho, theta, phi coordinates. Uh, one quick word of warning, and that is in mathematics, we use phi for this angle with the z-axis and theta for this angle in the x, y plane. In physics, these two things are often switched. Uh, one more word of warning, and that is that sometimes uh, books and, and, uh, and papers will use r instead of rho in spherical coordinates. So you do have to watch out. There's some nasty conflicts of notation that you may find in your science classes.